My name is Dr. Andre McLaurin, and I am the proud principal of Erdenheim Elementary School. At this time, I would like to welcome all of our students, staff members, and families to our virtual grade level Black History Month assemblies. Before we begin our presentation, I would like to take an opportunity to thank all of our students, staff members, and families who've contributed to make this assembly possible. I'd also like to talk a little bit about our amazing school community. As a school community, we talk a lot about our pillars of pride. And I can't help but to note how the concept of perseverance, respect, integrity, dependability, and empathy connects so strongly to the celebration of Black History Month. Because there's so many stories of African Americans, people of color, that connect to those different pillars. I can't help but to think through this idea of perseverance and how the first African Americans arrived here in America in 1619 as slaves and, consider, and were considered as property and not as human beings, how they were able to persevere through that for over 200 years where they were treated as property and not as people. They did not have rights. They did not have any education. They could not make any decisions for themselves. And yet and still they persevered. I can't help but to think about how when slavery ended and there are people of color that did not have any family, did not have any money, did not have any land, didn't have anywhere to live, but persevere and found a way. I can't help but to think about how there were people who needed to show respect towards people who were different from them in order to begin to talk about and discuss the need for change. And then there's this idea of integrity. Having personal accountability for who you are as a person. You know, we all needed some integrity and people needed integrity in our history in order to realize that the way things were needed to be changed. And then there's, then there's this idea of dependability. We had to depend on one another in order to make things better. And then there's the idea and the concept of empathy. Being able to walk in someone else's shoes or have understanding of someone else's experiences. And as we look and share to showcase our Black History Month program, there's so many stories that showcase the experiences of many different people. But when I think about it all, it all connects back to that ability to be able to persevere. And so as we look to honor and celebrate our Black History Month, it truly is a celebration. It truly is recognition of triumph, recognition of a group of people who've been able to persevere, but have also contributed to our American history to make America what it is today. And so friends, as you sit back in your classrooms or if you're at home and you watch our presentation, we hope that you look, we hope that you listen, but we also hope that you learn and that you also see how the celebration of Black History Month and the showcase of the many different people in our presentations help to connect to our pillars of pride. I wanna thank all of our students, staff, and community members for allowing us to be the school community that we are, a school community of pride. We hope you enjoy our presentation. Hi there, friends. As a part of our Black History Month assembly, we'd like to share a story with you titled, Our Children Can Soar, a celebration of Rosa Barak and the Pioneers of Change. This book was written by Michelle Cook. Our ancestors fought. So George could invent. George invented. So Jesse could sprint. Jesse sprinted. So Hattie could star. Hattie starred. So Ella could sing. Ella sang. So Jackie could score. Jackie scored.
so Rosa could sit. Rosa sat. So Ruby could learn. Ruby learned. So Martin could march. Martin marched. So Thurgood could rule. Thurgood ruled. So Barack could run. Barack ran. So our children can soar, and higher and faster and stronger they go. Hi, my name is Annalise Smith, and I'm in the third grade. I'll be sharing you a little bit about Ella Fitzgerald's life and singing you one of her hit songs. As a young woman in Virginia, Ella longed for independence and dreams of one day becoming an entertainer. As a teenager, she was living on the streets and singing for pennies. In 1934, at the age of 17, she got her big break. She entered the amateur night contest at Apollo Theater in Harlem. She signed up as a dancer at first, but changed her routine to singing when she saw a competition. They were dressed in sparkling matching dresses while she was in tattered clothes. But she wowed the audience with a unique voice and won first place prize of $25, worth about $500 today, literally going from bags to riches. The following year, she landed a role as lead singer with Chick Webb and his orchestra, a popular band and regularly played at one of Holland's hottest nightclubs, Savoy Ballroom. At the same time, she was building a solo career. In 1938, she recorded her first hit album and her first hit single, A Tisky to Tasky. Let's hear a little bit of it. A tisky to Tasky, a brown and yellow basket. I sent the letter to my mommy, and on the way I dropped it. I dropped it, I dropped it, yes, on the way I dropped it. A little girlie picked it up and put it in her pocket. I really like that song. Her career snowballed from there. In the 1950s, she developed her famous instrumental style of singing called scat. She collaborated with greats from all over the music industry including Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, Count Bassey, and Frank Sinatra. In 1958, she made history when she became the first African-American woman to win a Grammy. Over her long, successful career, she recorded more than 200 albums and some 2,000 songs. Ella had gone down in history as one of the most iconic voices of all time. She was finally known as the first lady of jazz and the first lady of song. Bye! Bessie Smith was born on April 15, 1884 in Tennessee. She was an American blues singer widely renowned during the jazz age. When Bessie was young, her parents passed away, and so she and her siblings began performing on street corners in order to survive on their own. Bessie briefly attended West Main Elementary School in Tennessee when she was young. She was the most popular female blues singer of the 1920s and the 1930s. Bessie Smith is often referred to as one of the greatest singers of her era and was a huge influence for other blues singers and jazz vocalists. Her career was cut short when she was involved in a car crash that killed her at age 43, but her legacy still lives on. Hi, my, for Black History Month, I'd like to tell about Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry was called the father of rock and roll because he inspired a lot of people like Keith Richards from Rolling Stones, 
Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, and me. John Lennon from the Beatles said, if you, if you tried to give rock and roll another name, you might call it Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry showed perseverance by making great music for everyone the way he wanted to, which wasn't easy for a black man in the 1950s. I hope you liked it. If you haven't checked out Chuck Berry, um, you should go check him out. That was Johnny B. Good. Bye. Thanks for watching. Crystal Bird Falls was born on June 27, 1894 in Princess Anne, Maryland. However, she spent most of her adult life in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, she worked as a public school teacher between 1914 and 18. In 1918, Crystal began working as a field secretary for African American Girls and the Young Women's Christian Association. Famous for having been in 1938, elected to represent the 18th District of Philadelphia, a 66% majority white district, the first African-American woman to serve as state legislator in the history of the United States of America. To go along with this, Foss was also a member of President Theodore Roosevelt's Black Cabinet, where she served as Director of Race Relations for the Office of Civil Defense. She promoted civil defense planning in black communities, as well as dealing with complaints about racial discrimination. One of her great quotes was given during the 1940s Women's Centennial Congress, where she says that we should not want to think of America as a melting pot, but as a great interracial laboratory where Americans can really begin to build the thing which the rest of the world feels that they stand for today, and that is a real democracy. Crystal Bird Falls' vision for a true democracy is one that is still shared and fought by many today. This week we're going to be celebrating Ed Bradley. Ed Bradley was born on June 22, 1941 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He went to Cheney State College and graduated in 1964. While in college, he volunteered at the Philadelphia radio station to get experience in broadcasting. Fast forward to 1976, Ed Bradley made history as becoming the first black White House correspondent for CBS. He was also known for interviewing famous celebrities like Muhammad Ali, Michael Jackson, Lena Horne, and more. Today we will be discussing Cecil B. Moore. Cecil Bassett Moore, born in West Virginia, was a veteran as well as an active civil rights figure. After attending school in Kentucky, then enlisting in the Marine Corps, Moore returned to the United States and settled in Philadelphia in 1947. Moore attended Temple University, where he received his degree in law. He became an excellent attorney and a militant leader during the Civil Rights Movement. He was known for his more abrasive and in-your-face style of leadership, twisting the heads of those who were more used to a peaceful and moderate type. He advocated for his fellow Black Americans to vote and participate in more political campaigns. Through protesting, he was able to get more Black people into labor unions and integrate them into schools. With his leadership and dedication, he became the president of the NAACP in 1962. Although Moore was known for his controversial manner, he continued to have a large support from the black community in Philadelphia as well as a larger impact on the rights of black Americans. The 
this is my song and no one can take it away it's been so long but now you're here Julian Francis Abel was born on April 30th, 1881, and was the youngest of eight successful children who had long been a fixture of the African-American aristocracy of Philadelphia. In 1902, he was the first black graduate of Penn School of Architect. He was also the first African-American architect to receive professional recognition. Abel has designed over 400 buildings, including the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the Free Library of Philadelphia, the Land Title Building, Harvard University's Widener Memorial Library, and much of the Duke University's campus. He has enjoyed a long and illustrious career at a prominent Philadelphia firm, and many of the buildings that bear his design stamp have endured to become American. Julie Chisholm was the first black woman to be, in the, to be a U.S. Congresswoman to run for President of the United States in 1972. She wrote a biography in 1970 called Unbought and Unbossed. I will read two famous Shirley Chisholm quotes I found in her book's introduction. I was the first American citizen to be elected to Congress in spite of the double drawbacks of being female and having skin darkened by melanin. When you put it that way, it sounds like a foolish reason for fame. In just and free society, it would be foolish. That I am a national figure because I was the first person in 192 years to be at once a congressman, black, and a woman proves I would think that our society is not yet either just or free. In an interview in 2005, at the age of 80, Miss Chisholm spoke up of how she wanted to be remembered. I want history to remember me not just as the first black woman to have made a bid for presidency of the United States, but as a black woman who lived in the 20th century and dared to be herself. I want to be remembered as a catalyst for change in America. But you don't have to be near me to know that I'm singing. This is my song and nothing can make it. It's been so long, and it's stronger, I know why, and I wonder if you really, really know, that as long as I live, I will see.
The boy will boy. Her principal, James Weldon Johnson, and his brother John Roseman Johnson, had written the hymn for a celebration of President Abraham Lincoln's birthday. The girl wanted to make them proud. She hummed the song on her way home from school. She practiced it as she did her chores. On the big day, February 12th, 1900, she was part of a choir, 500 strong, back straight, head high, heart and mouth open. She sang, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Wing with the harmonies of liberty. And she kept on singing as she grew up. She taught it to her students when she became a teacher. She crooned it to her husband as they journeyed from Jacksonville, Florida, to a new life in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She sang it when she rocked her baby boy to sleep. It was a part of her she wanted to pass on. You know what? Her little boy learned that song. He listened to her hum it as she dreamed of being able to teach again in her new home. He heard his daddy sing it when the days at the steel mill wore him down. Then one day he stood in the choir loft and gazed at the glowing faces, back straight, head high, heart and mouth open. He sang, Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. He keeps singing. He sang sing it when he came back from World War II. It and face condemnation. He sang it when he joined in the ACP. He sang it with his wife and to his baby daughter as he rocked her to sleep. It was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. She sang it each morning at school. Then came the day that broke the nation's heart. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. The next morning, she saw her teacher cry. Sobs replaced singing. Then whimpers and silence. Who would lead them now? The song whispered an answer. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. And she kept on singing. She sang it at protests for equal rights. And when she and her friends were jailed. She sang that song in her heart each time she won or lost a case as a lawyer. She sang it to her baby boy as she rocked him to sleep. It was part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned that song. Every family reunion opened with that anthem. He sang because he had to at first, but then something changed. He saw the awe in his grandparents' faces, saw the pride in his mamas and pops. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, he sang. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. And he kept on singing. He sang it at his college graduation and when he opened his first business. He sang it at rallies to stand up against racism. He sang it holding his wife's hand at black history programs and when he rocked his daughter to sleep. It was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? 
His little girl learned that song, and on another big day, September 24, 2016, she stood in a crowd of thousands along with her mama and daddy. President Obama, the first lady in generations of one family, rang the Freedom Bell, a dream born a country ago to honor black lives and contributions had finally come true. The National Museum of African American History and Culture was officially opened. With the Washington Monument piercing the sky, that little girl stared at the bronze building, majestic as a crown. As bells around the nation tolled and triumphed, she heard her a voice rising too. Clear and strong, it was a song she had heard her parents sing. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. And you know what? That song is part of you. Sing when you score a victory. Sing when tough times get you down. Sing and think of all people who sang before you, who carried and pushed forward even, even everything was against them. Sing and remember they never stopped believing. Keep singing, keep pushing on, keep passing it on, keep on keeping on. Keep singing, keep pushing, keep passing it on, keep on keeping on. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Markle. We hope that you enjoyed our Black History Month celebration. We'd like to thank a few people for helping to make this possible. Thank you so much, Mrs. Schulteis, for organizing that beautiful read aloud of Our Children Can Soar. And thank you to our staff members that also participated in the reading. We'd also like to thank our Voices of Excellence group, our VOE group at the high school. Thank you so much for sharing some awesome videos that really taught our students about some influential African Americans and their impact on our history. We really appreciate you all. A special thanks to Mr. Pantel and his high school students and their beautiful singing. Um, we were so inspired by all of your work and your creativity and also um, hearing that beautiful read aloud of our story as well. We are so appreciative of our collaboration and partnership. Thank you for all you do for our Ardenheim uh, school community. We'd also like to thank all of our staff members and all of your efforts this past month to celebrate Black History Month. Um, but finally, and most importantly, we want to thank our students and families. Thank you for participating in our Black History Month project. It was so amazing to see the beautiful works that our students and families created together. We hope that you 
um, learned a lot, that you were inspired um, by the people that you learned. I know by sharing this, you've inspired so many in our school community, and we are so thankful for all of your support. So thank you so much. We appreciate you all. Um, remember, just because uh, this month is over does not mean that your learning should stop. Um, we challenge you to keep pushing on, to keep learning new things. There are so many influential African Americans um, who have touched and had an impact on our society. So keep learning, keep going out, um, keep being inspired and then inspiring people. Share your story. Everyone has a story and it's important for us to learn from each other. Have a good day.